sure we'll have authority, but why do we need authority in heaven? God didn't say to Adam, well, you'll have authority when you get to heaven. He said, I give you authority here on this earth. Yes. He recognized it was only speaking the word that released that authority. Yes. You will be given dunamis, a wor miracle working power from on high. And then you will have what? authority, the right to govern, and then you will have the miraculous energizing power yes. of God that will <laughs> join with that, and you will work miracles and change the world. Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Hi, my name is Michelle Steele. And I am Annette Caps, and we're going to have a good time today, aren't Praise we? Praise the Lord. <laughs> we are ex entering into one of my favorite teachings that your dad brought into the body of Christ. And through this teaching, I have recognized who I am and what I can do in my authority in Christ Jesus. Yes. And so we're going to be talking about authority in three worlds. And I know some people, when they, uh, authority in three worlds, well, which three worlds? Well, what are we talking about here? But when you, when you talk about authority, Michelle, some people go, well, that sounds all legal to me. You know, I'm not interested in legal stuff. Well, um, you know, most people are not interested in legal things until they've been wronged. That's true. Isn't that true? <laughs> and, and then they want some authority to help them and exercise their rights. Then they want to know, what are my rights? Yes. I mean, can somebody tell me what my rights are? Because I've been wronged. Yes. And what most Christians don't realize is that they have been wronged. They've Too been wronged. Too many people are allowing it to continue as well. That's right. And so today we're going to talk about how we can find out what our rights are and yes. what authority we have as believers. What can we do about it? Oh, you this know, is good stuff. I listened to um, your father's teachings on faith for so many years, yeah. but the first time that he came and preached at our local church in, in the Kansas area, um, he, he taught on faith in the morning, and then he taught on authority, how God taught Abraham faith was his faith message. But then that evening he taught on authority. And I had never heard authority taught in a way that I could apply it and in a way that made sense to me as a believer personally yeah. until that night. And that teaching on authority has been the framework that of every time I've ever taught on authority, that message was the framework for that teaching. Yeah. And today we're talking about the book, The Authority in Three Worlds, that you have just brought out in a I like a it. brand new I like version. It. I like it. But it also has with it a very important um, teaching tool of the the study guide yes. as well as the um, Bible school, nine DVDs and 12 CDs that go along from teachings that your father did in a Bible school that we now have it formatted with the study guide yes. so that it can help people take that same truth and put it to work. That's yeah. what helped me so much. I could take, I walked right out of that, that service and I put it to work. Yes. And uh, my dad did too. <laughs> <laughs> he started learning about his authority that, you know, God created Adam. And what did he say to him? He said, I want you to go and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and everything that creeps on the earth. God committed this entire earth and it's everything on it to Adam. Yes. To take care of, to guard it, to keep it, 
a wonderful, beautiful paradise of yes. God. And yet he sold out to the devil. He, turned, he just handed the keys over to the devil. You know, here you go. You know, I've been told about this, but he did it. And so what we find out is that that authority was restored through Jesus Christ. Yes. He gave back that authority through his death, his burial, his resurrection. He turned that back to us. And so when my dad realized, because he was brought up in a religious household, you know, and we're just worms in the dust. Just pray that we hold out to the end. You know, God tempts us and God tests us. We never know all of the reasons why. That's what he heard in church. Yes. So he didn't think he had any authority. But when he found out that God had restored that authority, he said, well, you know, if this is really true. Then it says, I have dominion over the fish of the sea. If I have dominion over the fish of the sea, then I have dominion over the bass of the lake. <laughs> and so he went out and he started fishing. And before he always said, well, I don't ever catch anything. But once he began to speak and say, I have authority and I have dominion, I'm going to catch more fish than anybody else, then he began to catch fish. Now you say, what in the world does that have to do with the authority of Jesus? Well, if you can't take the Bible and the, and the authority of God's Word and use it in everyday life, then yes. what, what, why are we going to need that in heaven? Yes. Why, sure, we'll have authority, but why do we need authority in heaven? God didn't say to Adam, well, you'll have authority when you get to heaven. He said, I give you authority here on this earth. Yes. And you take dominion over it. You exercise dominion over it. And so that started his eyes being open, using it now, today, in his own life. Yes, that natural application of using it in catching fish, but the authority connected with his declaring and the confessing of the word. Your dad said something often, and he it's in the front, the very first chapter, as a matter of fact, in the book, The Authority of Three Worlds. He said, um, and I'm going to quote it exactly so I don't mess it up. He said, if, he, if the Lord spoke to him this specifically, if you will teach my people to understand authority as the man in Matthew chapter 8, the centurion, as he understood authority, they will be able to operate the same kind of faith. Yeah. So that connection is something that a lot of people are lacking they, right. they want to have faith, but they don't know how to exercise their dominion. And, and that connection is vital to any application of faith. Absolutely right. And when you're talking about the centurion, that got me really excited because <laughs> that's an important point because the first chapter, he says, man or woman under authority. Yes. Under authority. We're talking about delegated authority. When people hear that and they say, well, why would Charles want to do that with the have dominion over the fish just to catch more fish? Because that same principle gave him the right to stand against and take dominion over his finances, yes. dominion over his body, yes. dominion over the negative thoughts that came against his mind. That's where it came from. But it's not just that we decide, oh, I've got authority. We didn't just decide that. This is delegated authority. And the centurion, you know, he wasn't Jewish. Right. And here Jesus was ministering. And he's ministering to Jewish people, but this centurion being a Gentile actually heard um, about Jesus. And what he heard and what he recognized, Michelle, was that, hey, this sounds like, he keeps talking, Jesus keeps talking about his father. He says what he hears the father say. He does what he sees the father do. That sounds like my job. Yes. Because I have someone over me and he tells me what to do and I do it. He says, go, come, and I do it. But yes. then I tell the people under me to go, to come, and they do it because I have authority over them. Yes. Right? So Jesus is saying the Father 
has given me this authority to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out devils. Yes, he's the one who sent me. He's the one who sent me. Yes. I am the sent one. Yes. And so the centurion, when Jesus said, okay, when he said, he said, my, my servant is sick. And everybody wanted Jesus to come and to touch them and to heal them. And this centurion said this absolutely amazing thing. Yes. He said, oh, I, you don't need to come to my house. <laughs> Speak the word and my servant will be healed. He recognized it was only speaking the word that released that authority. Yes. And his servant was healed. And Je what did Jesus say about him? Wow, wow, that was re really cool. That guy, he had some faith. No, he said, I have not found so great faith, not even in Israel among yes. the Jewish people. It's faith. Faith. It's faith. Recognizes faith. the authority of the word and that delegated authority of the one speaking the word. That's right. We're not just bouncing out here going, I bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus on our own something. When we say in the name of Jesus, we're saying, he sent me to speak this word and I bind the powers of darkness in the life of my family. I bind the powers of darkness and blindness that have taken over my son, my daughter, and is, is binding them and causing them to not see the light of the gospel. And I break your power, devil, in the name of Jesus. Loose them and let them go. That's right. Come on. <laughs> that wasn't me. Jesus gave me authority yes. to do that. Yes. Jesus gave me authority to do that. Praise God. In Luke chapter 10, you know, when Jesus sent out his disciples, he sent out the 12, first of all, the apostles. I want you to go forth, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. And they did. But then later on, Luke chapter 10, Jesus said he called 70 more. Yes. And he said, I want you to go do the same thing. All authority and power is given unto me, and you go forth. All power. He says, all power. Did you find that in Luke chapter 10? He says, all power is given unto me. He said, you go forth in my name. I want you to go forth. I want you to take uh, basically my word. Yes. It's okay. We'll do, we'll, they'll, they'll find it. I've got Luke 10, behold, I give unto you power. Yeah, there Tread you go. on serpents and scorpions. Yeah, read that out for Luke us. Luke 10, 19, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now let's look at, was he talking about real scorpions and serpents? Well, sure, we've got authority over those things. I mean, but what is he talking about? He's talking about evil. He's talking about the messengers of Satan. Yes. And he said, I give you power. Now, when you talk about power, people think about this kind of power, strength power, you know. That word there is exousia. Yes. I give you authority. Authority. The, um, in the Strong's Concordance, it, the word is also defined as the right to govern. Oh, wow. The right to govern. As, yes. So authority is our right to govern the situation. That's right. So he gave them the right to go forth and to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. Now, who causes sickness? The enemy, Satan. Satan. He, who, obviously we know if you're casting out devils, you're casting out Satan's wicked forces. Healing the sick, raising the dead. Who is the author of death? Satan. And so they, they go out and all these miraculous things happen. They come back, Lord, Lord, all, even the devils, it says, even the devils submit to us in your name. And Jesus said, well, don't rejoice in that. Rejoice that your names are written in the, in the book of life in heaven. Okay, so... I want to particularly note something here. You know, the apostles, this all happened before the day of Pentecost. Yes. The apostles worked miracles before the day of Pentecost. Before the blood was shed, before the work of the cross was completed. 
All right, so this is before this is all completed. And then, well, those were apostles. They've been with Jesus somehow by osmosis, they whatever. But then he takes 70 people that were not apostles, and he said, you go heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out That's devils. Good. You'll tread on serpents and scorpions, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Yes, yes. They hadn't been through the day of Pentecost. They hadn't received power from on high. The only thing they have at this point is the authority of Jesus' name. Yes. Delegated authority. Praise God. And just the delegation of the authority of going forth and being sent because Jesus said to do so. Yes. Worked miracles. Yes. Now, I don't want to get too far ahead, but what do you think happened then on the day of Pentecost? Yeah, how much more effective is that authority with the shedding of the blood and the completion of the new creation in Christ because of the work of the cross and the covenant that we have in that blood? Exactly. If that happened then, what should we be doing now? Jesus said, when he said, I give you authority, he said, I give you authority over all the power of the enemy. He said, I give you authority over all the dunamis of the enemy, the workings of the enemy, the workings of the enemy. And then he, when he said, I want you to go to Jerusalem and wait until you are endued with power dunamis from on high. Yes. So listen to this and see if you can hold on to your seat. <laughs> Jesus gave the authority, the exousia. I give you authority. What did you say? The right to govern? Right to govern. The it right also means to govern. Jurisdiction. The jurisdiction in the name of Jesus yes. over sickness and over Satan, over demons. And then he says, But wait, wait. When you stay in Jerusalem, there will come a time when you will be endued with power or given power. Did that mean more authority? No, that word is dunamis. Yes. You will be given dunamis, a wor miracle working power from on high. And then you will have what? Authority, the right to govern. And then you will have the miraculous energizing power yes. of God that will join <laughs> with that and you will work miracles and change the world. Yes, yes. And Ooh. be a witness unto me. And be a witness. So the authority that we operate in, that delegated authority that from our position in Christ and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit are necessary for us to be the witness, the representatives that we're supposed to be because that's how we execute his plan, his will on the earth. That is absolutely the truth. And you know what? There's so many, so many Christians out there that they've been given the authority. Jesus said it. Oh, yes. well, I'm not a minister, therefore I don't have authority. And I didn't say if you're a minister... To as many as believe on believe. my name. Yes. And they've been given the authority. There are even people out there that have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, received their heavenly language, the power, the dunamis power is out in them, and they're not doing anything. You know why? Because there's a we've got the authority, exousia, we've got the dunamis, the energizing power. But there's something missing in the middle, and the third thing is faith. Yes, yes. First, in order to have faith, you've got to understand it. You've got to know it. You've got to know your right standing. That is the coming together of all of this equipment, the supernatural supply that the Lord has provided, the authority, the faith in the authority, the faith in the power of God, yes. and then to be able to walk in that you want to yeah. access this study guide, this book, 
and this Bible course, nine DVDs, 12 CDs. It's going to revolutionize the way you deal with problems. It's going to revolutionize the way you pray. It's going to change you from the inside out because the Word of God is going to equip you with this knowledge of who you are and the authority that you have in the name of Jesus. You as a believer, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, there is delegated authority available to you so that you can walk in the victory that is already made yours in Christ Jesus. So I encourage you, we're gonna have some information coming up on the screen and uh, we want you to prevail against every, every attack of the enemy in Jesus' name. Thanks for tuning in. We've got covenant authority because God sent his son, a lamb, and shed his blood. We have a covenant with God. We entered into that covenant and we have covenant rights. So we've got covenant authority. We've got legal authority by being born here as a human. And then we have the delegated authority that Jesus gave us, the Father through the Son gave us His name. We have three realms of authority. We have, whew, we have three <laughs> realms of authority. Yes. And we have that authority to operate in all three realms, heaven, earth, and beneath the earth. Well, thank you for joining us today for this special broadcast with Pastor Michelle Steele. Pastor Michelle, Thank you so much for writing this study guide and putting it together. It's gonna to be a blessing to so many people and I know they're gonna love it. Well, this complete Bible school package we are offering you today includes the study guide that Michelle put together, the book, and nine DVDs plus 11 CDs. That's offer 2778. Call 877-396-9400 or visit caps.tv. The ordering information is on your screen right now. Well, this is a great package for personal study or for churches, Bible classes, and Sunday school groups. You know, what stands out to me, Michelle, is the importance the Spirit of God placed upon us getting this together. Yes. And my office staff spent hours and hours just trying to pull together the nine DVDs from the original Bible school sessions. But they got it done. Yes. You know, this is a teaching you absolutely must understand in this day and time in which we live. And I know you agree. Call 877-396-9400. Ask for Bible school offer 2778. And if the number is busy, please call back. Our office staff gets really upset when they miss your calls and they want to hear from you. Now, I wanted to include everything I possibly could on the subject of authority in this Bible school. So along with nine DVDs, we put 11 CDs, the book and the study guide together. And I included the very best CD teachings that my dad did, including the Dominion Principle. You, God gave Adam dominion and it has been restored. That's a great one. Then there's authority, faith, and anointing. And that one is so powerful that when I had a member of the office staff listen, he took off running around the office <laughs> with, under the anointing of God. So we're including that. Praise God. Now, for those of you who just want to dip your toes in the water, well, you can order the book by itself, Authority in Three Worlds, or just the study guide or both. Everything can be ordered separately. You can also have a copy of this program. We try to get you anything you want. Michelle, it's time people stop the stealing and the robbery that's been going on in their lives. Amen. Learn to stand in their authority and break the power of the enemy. This is a small investment for something that could radically change people's lives. Yes. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name right now, let this anointing and let this message go out to the entire body of Christ. Yes. Loose the anointing upon them. Lord, help them to gain the understanding of the authority that we have in Jesus' name and let them rise up and let the church of Jesus Christ become what it should be in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching. 
understanding authority is what caused this man to be de so highly developed in his faith. And as I was studying that and praying about it, the Lord s said to me right in my spirit, He said, if you'll teach the body of Christ to understand authority the way this man understood authority, then, he says, they'll be able to operate in the same kind of faith. In other words, the, the greatest form of faith, the faith that Jesus bragged about. In fact, the Bible says he marveled at their faith, at his faith. There's two places in the Scriptures where it says Jesus marveled. One is here in the 8th chapter of Matthew where he marveled at this man's faith, and the other is in Mark the 6th chapter where he marveled at the unbelief of the people in his own hometown. Well, I'll tell you, I'd rather have him marvel at my faith than my unbelief. But now let's notice that the man says, I am a man under authority and having soldiers under me. So he's a military man. He's been trained in that. He knows that the delegated authority will stand up and that he has the authority to speak the word and cause individuals to do certain things, implying that Jesus has the authority to speak the word and his servant would be healed. And it says in verse 13, Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed the self same hour. Now he went on home. Notice he didn't change anything. He still believed in what he believed when he spoke to Jesus. He believes that his servant is healed because Jesus spoke the word. And he didn't speak any religious words. He just said, Go thy way as thou hast believed. Now see, there's power in believing. Faith gets things done. And as he spoke the word, the man had already believed. Now, uh, another thing that I want to point out to you here that I think will be beneficial to you. This man established his own point of contact. You see, when we talk about the laying on of hands, it's actually establishing a point of contact where that we can release our faith. We know when to release our faith. If someone lays hands on us, we know that uh, that's the time to release our faith, that we receive our healing. Well, the point of contact this man established was when you speak the word, then my servant will be healed. So he established his own point of contact. He said, this is it. If you speak, it will be that my servant will be healed. That's the way it'll be. And Jesus just said, go on as you have believed. In other words, don't change a thing. Just keep believing what you believed. And the man's servant was healed the self same hour. Now, I think it's good that we understand that. And we know that, that we have authority over circumstances of life.